Hey there, I'm Kevin. I like to talk about queer stuff in Jesus, and today we're answering your questions from the internet with another round of decent advice. This first question actually came from Twitter, which is like, I don't usually take questions from there, but it was a really good question. I don't know if it was actually like meant for this, but I'm gonna answer it. It's from at PornstarPastor. Um, first of all, I love what you've had to say in a lot of these videos. She's specifically talking about the one where I talk about uh, gay girl, good God, <laughs> good God. But the part I'm having a hard time with is when you draw the line about being affirming. Obviously, I totally get the damage done in Jesus' name, but for people who can't bring themselves to be queer affirming, believing the Bible is clear about homosexuality, is it enough for them to be faith affirming? So while they might not agree about whether homosexuality is a sin, they are able to identify and celebrate what God is doing, including full inclusion, serving, and staff. If that's not enough, where are the other opportunities? I would argue that if a church uh, or if someone is like, yeah, I want to affirm your gifts in ministry. Yes, I affirm you as a person, but I think homosexuality is a sin. Um, I would challenge that person to say, to ask like, are you sure that you actually believe that for a few reasons? First one being like, if you actually believe that homosexuality is a sin, then how, like, how are you able, I'm, I'm honestly very curious, how are you able to reconcile these things in your mind? It's one of those things where it feels like what my friend Miles calls benevolent hypocrisy, where like you say that you believe one thing and yet you act a certain way, and, and which is very interesting that you act better than you state that you believe. So for example, I have many, I, have, I don't say I have many friends, but like my, my family, for example, cousins and extended family, like they're pretty conservative. Uh, some of them are pastors and ministry leaders. And they, anytime I come home, it, even if my face is done, even if my nails are dead, even if I'm acting like the biggest flamer in the universe, my family still treats me with love and respect. Even though I think if I ask them point blank, do you think homosexuality is a sin? I'm 99% sure I'd know what answer I would get. For a queer person, they have to kind of count the cost for themselves. Like, is it worth it for me to be in relationship with this person? Or is it going to be something that's gonna be detrimental because I know deep down, they really don't believe who I am is okay. I think there's plenty of room. Like if you're somebody who treats people with love and respect, there's, all, if in my book, there's always room for relationship where there's love and mutual respect. And that's like interpersonal. In a church-wide context, like say like a church is like saying that they're loving they're loving and welcoming, but they're not allowing people to participate in one way or another. That is where I have a problem. You have to clearly and explicitly state what you believe. And maybe that should apply to everyone. All people, regardless of who you are, regardless of like what like your relationship to queer people is, just state what you believe and then let people, based off of a full knowledge of who you are, make a decision about what kind of relationship they want to have with you. Because really that's all we can do is just tell the truth about who we are, right? So even in relationships, Clarity is reasonable. <laughs> Did you know that you can text my hotline? I didn't know this either. So if you ever want to either text a question or, or, or leave me a voicemail, you can either text or call 404-507-2625. Hey, I was wondering if you could talk about how hard uh, sexual expectations are. Um, sometimes I feel like our culture makes it out to seem like everyone is having sex all the time and it just happens effortlessly without any previous communication. <laughs> LOL, LOL. Um, I feel like there's a culture around having to guess what people want slash what they are, are or are not into. So it makes it hard to talk about sexual expectations when there's so much pressure on it. Um, I feel pressure often by others to have sex, but when I'm open, but when I want to have an open conversation about sexual expectations, that's when people get scared and they say they don't want to have sex with me after all. Girl, I know what you're talking about. I don't want to internalize this as another I'm too intense thing, but sometimes it, I do and it makes me feel sad. Almost all people would prefer, almost all people would prefer that we don't talk about sexual expectations. And this is important to me because I was in a relationship with someone for three years who would expect sex from me and we would not talk about it. This led to me having a lot of anxiety and security around sex. Any advice on how to navigate a culture of uncommunicated sexual expectations? Yes, I do. We have to normalize talking about sex. We have to normalize talking about what we want and what we don't want. And you were absolutely right. Oftentimes people just don't know how to do it or they feel embarrassed or uh, they, don't have their, they don't have the language to talk about it because they were never equipped to talk about it. So what does it look like for us on this end of the world or on this side of deconstruction or wherever you're at? What does it look like for us to set the precedent that saying talking about sex is not only okay, but absolutely necessary for a healthy sexual life? I relate really hard to what you're saying about being in a relationship with someone who just expected sex, but like we never talked about it. And I will say in my own context, 
Um, he wanted to talk about it a whole lot and I couldn't. I was, I was so filled up with shame around a lot of different things. And so it made for me, it made sex really hard to talk about because I just, I had so much shame around my own desire. And so, but it's one of those things where you just have to not shame your partner into talking about sex. It's almost just like, hey, I just want to like set the stage. Like, this is what I want to do. What do you think you want to do? Um, rather than just saying, tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. No, like what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you what I want or what I desire and what I don't want and what I don't desire. And that's going to allow uh, my partner or whoever I'm with the same opportunity in the same room to name what they want and desire. And I also want to say with this is that you don't owe sex to anyone, even your partner. Just because you're in a relationship with someone does not mean that you owe them your, your body. It doesn't mean that you owe them sex. It doesn't mean that you have to do what they want just because you're in a relationship with them. And anytime they try to coerce you into it, anytime they try to push you into it and you don't want to have it, like you need to just like draw a hard line. And this happens a lot within like Christian marriages is that men and women will get married at a young age and women are just expected to have sex with their husbands because that's their wifely duty. Um, and that's how marital rape occurs. That's how so many people get hurt and so how why so many of my friends like are on this other side of like deconstruction and realizing wow like I have been hurting for so long. So you don't owe sex to anyone. Make talking about sex one of your expectations, you know what I'm saying? If they expect sex, you should they should expect to talk about it. That's my deal with that. So if people don't want to talk about sex and you're not comfortable having sex with them, don't have sex with them. I believe that it is always okay to ask for what you want as long as you're always okay with hearing no. So I hope that made sense. I hope that was helpful. Okay, let's go ahead and pull one from the hotline. Again, if you ever want to, you can call the hotline and leave yourself a voicemail anonymously or not anonymously, whatever you want to do. And the number is 404-507-2625. So on the hotline, we got this call. Hi there. Um, my name is Leah. And so basically like, um, I'm Muslim Christian, obviously. After recently being kicked out of my church and stuff for like being a lesbian, um, it wasn't until recently that I was able to like, I don't know, just accept myself or who I am within my faith still. I don't really have any churches in my area who are okay with LGBT and will support them. Like, I don't know, I just need to try and figure out ways to I don't know, just like grow stronger like in my relationship with God, like personally away from any church because any church will, it probably won't accept me. But anyways, um, I hope that question made a tidy bit of sense. Anyways, um, yeah, have a good day, bye. Hey Leah, uh, I definitely know what it is to be a part of communities that don't hold space for you as a queer person. And you're right, it is really, really tough to walk into churches where they just don't love you for who you are and can accept you for all of who you are. So I think the thing I'm, I'm parsing out here is like, how do I just grow in my relationship with God and like become uh, more spiritually grounded, more spiritually healthy? And I'm gonna say something a little controversial probably, but I don't think, I do not believe that you have to be a part of a local church to be in good relationship with God. Being in community certainly helps because, I mean, having shared values is helpful. Having people that you lean on is helpful. Having someone who has like walked a spiritual path longer than you is helpful. However, it is not necessary for you to have a close relationship with God. So certain things that I do, I keep a meditation practice, which is definitely more Eastern for sure. Um, I started off using an app called Headspace to help me like learn how to meditate well. I also use, uh, there's a really great app called Our, the Our Bible app, which is the Bible app basically for everybody else. Uh, LGBTQ inclusive, women inclusive, POC centric. It's a really fantastic app and it's full of devotionals by people like you and me. And I actually have one published right now on the Our Bible app called As Yourself. So you can go check that out. Link is in the description box. But I think just like figure out what works for you. Maybe that'll look like being alone in nature. Maybe that's gonna look like uh, finding some, some sort of meditation practice. Maybe it just means cracking open a Bible and just reading it for yourself. I think that's, that's one way. The other way, I also am a big fan of finding community through the internet, through Twitter and through Instagram. The faithfully LGBT hashtag is a lifesaver. It's where I found most of my internet friends. So you can still cultivate community. You can still uh, be Christian. You can still grow in your faith. And you're gonna realize that just like, as you're continuing on, like, God is already with you. Your God is like, you already have a strong relationship with God. You just 
have to recognize it. And I think that the stronger the relationship with you, have, you have with yourself, the stronger love you have for yourself, the stronger your relationship with God is going to grow because just like this is the temple, this is the body. This is the thing that carries the presence of God. And same thing for you, your body, the way you love yourself is how directly correlated with how you can love and accept humanity and love God, in my opinion. You're not alone in this. Get on the internet, find community that way. Start building some new spiritual practices. I love you, Leah. Uh, thank you so much for watching Decent Advice. Uh, as always, go ahead and leave a comment below, share and subscribe. If you have any questions for next time, I'd love to answer them. You can leave those in the comment box below. And if you like this video and you think more queer Christian content should be made available to the world, you can become a sustaining partner on Patreon. Even as little as one or two bucks a month makes a huge difference. So I am now going to go, um, probably go to class or something. Thanks so much for watching and I guess I'll talk to you later. Bye.